You follow? So therefore, they sent out ships to protect America. These are Moors. I got this in the, in, the, in the Constitution book. The whole dialogue, the whole history is written out for you. It tells you the, the place, the time, and everything. Sent them here. So they made a treaty with them first. This is why the White House, the capital, the so-called capital, is called the White House. Because the word White House comes from the word Dar Beda. Dar Beda means the White House in Morocco. And that's the capital of the largest city there. Rabat has recently become the capital of Morocco. The original capital of Morocco was Dar Beda, which in Spanish we say Casablanca, which means the same thing, a white castle or a large white house. So the fact that the United States has a white house as a central point and has a dome on it like a mosque tells you that it was influenced by people who came from Morocco called Moors, Dar Beda. You follow what I'm trying to say? And they sent Abraham Lincoln inside it, but he's sitting in this, the seat of Ramesses. He's not sitting, he's sitting like a pharaoh Ramesses. If you ever see the statue of Ramesses when you walk by and the thing about what you see in Washington, Abraham Lincoln is doing the same thing. So every grandmaster is because of Ramesses. Okay. So there were Negroes here that were called slaves, even though we know the word slave is Slavic and can't apply to us. They did allow themselves to be called slaves and be treated like property. You follow that? You also had the Moors. Now, what was important about this thing is when I say the Moors came to America, the first thing that comes to your mind is Moroccans with light skin and wavy hair. But the treaty said, do not send any mulatto. No mulattoes was allowed. And mulatto was not, like I said many times, was not even an English word. It was from molad. Those born out of our seed. So they did not allow, they only allowed dark-skinned, woolly-haired Moors to come to America. Because they did not want to mix them in with their mulattoes that was already here because of the, uh, what do you call it, the French and the Portuguese raping us. You know, hunky. Hun you know what hunky means, right? Huh? Did you know where it came from? When they would go outside our towns on the other side of the road and honk their horns so the black women would come out. That's why we refer to them as hunkies. They were honk, because horns years ago didn't go beep, they just go honk, honk, if you're old enough, you know that. And so the only way they could get the black women, the Caucasian, get black women to come out at night to make money for their families before they brought them in their house and made like they were washing the floors and taking care of their kids so they can have sex with them, they used to pull up outside our neighbors, honk, 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 and black women would know to go out there to the woods and they'd meet white or police officers or whatever, and they'd get a couple of dollars for some sex. They'd also implant seeds at times. It's a sad story, but this happened to be true. That's where the name came from. But okay, if I got lost. So they only allowed a certain more here. They were afraid that the more that came in were going to get mixed up with the uh, African that was here and the mulattoes. So they said, make sure you only bring in dark-skinned, woolly-haired moors from Morocco. Now, part of the plot was to later capture them. They didn't tell us that, though. So now when we came in as Moors, they gave us documents and paperwork and treaties made with George Washington with his signature on it, which is in that book I gave you, you follow? Telling you that they are to be treated like equal citizens to every Caucasian in this country. Now, these were black men and black women with these kind of feathers on them. Walking around during the same time they were having slave blocks and selling people, there were black people there buying the slaves who were more. That's real. That was us. Your father, that was our culture. We forgot it because we think Africa is our only home. But we were already here. And then we had some that came over here. Again, we were not Muslims. We didn't care. They associate the word more with the word Muslim. Muslim is, is, a, is a curse to a real more. Because we knew that the Berbers invaded us with their Arab, Arab, Arabized ways and poisoned us into believing in their image and therefore pushed more out of existence and all the cultural contributions we did got lost. You follow? But they go back. Once they got over here, remember you have your slaves, and then you had your Moors, 
And then you had your indigenous people who were already here. The indigenous people were mixed in with Hu Shen, right? And they produced what you call Native Americans. When you hear about a Native American and you see a person with a round face and two long straight braids, that's not the Native American, that's an Indian. You understand? That's an American Indian. But that's not a Native American. Native American were all max like that face, that statue man out there, you come in with that big round head and big lips and that big nose. I wouldn't even be classified as all max. They're purer than me. It's what you mean to be honest, but that's who they were. They were the indigenous people of this land. The Chinese came in, mixed in with them, and produced what you're calling Native Americans today or Indians. And the Caucasian gave them all our rights. Right. Now they walk around saying Cherokee, Choctaw, Shinnecock, Cheyenne, and we walk around saying African, African, African. So what he did to appease the African, he created what's called the Emancipation Proclamation. Sounds big. But the whole thing is he put forth a proclamation that he's going to emancipate us and free us from slavery. But he did not promise us anything. Now there was a promissory note saying 40 acres of the mule. But we multiplied so fast that they was afraid that if they offered every person who stepped forward for that 40 acres of the mule, there wouldn't be enough acreage left on this planet. We would take over. So they had to drop that and the mule and just start slapping us upside the head whenever we started asking for our rights or creating organizations that would stifle our growth. You follow that? The first thing to do was to create religion. Get us caught up in religions that don't pertain to our own past, such as regardless of what I or Farrakhan or the five percents or the Morris Science Temple, or anybody else says, when you see this word, which I'm quite sure you have a hard time figuring out, the number L, out of, I could write it with a long letter, but I'm doing a shortcut, okay? Out of, drop this and go out of. You hear that word, out of? What do you think of when you hear out of? Tell the truth. Do you think of Farrakhan? Do you think of Noble Juali? You think of the Ansars? No. You think of Saudi Arabian Arabs. Light skinned guys walking around with white on, with pop bellies and stuff, <laughs> you know, with cocky ass attitudes, all tycoon. That is Arab. When you trace that back to, they'll say, Muhammad was an Arabian prophet. No Muslim will deny that, that Muhammad was an Arabian prophet, right? So there's a subtle confession that Muhammad was an Arab 